Many artists have received a plentiful amount of Grammy Award nominations, but have yet to win. Nicki Minaj is no exception to this, so today let's investigate why one of the most prolific modern female artists and successful rappers has yet to win. Knowing that the Grammys is a host to scandal, it can't be far off to say foul play may be involved. With huge hits such as Anaconda, her feature on Bang Bang, and her records Pink Friday and The Pink Print being up for some of the biggest nominations of their respective ceremony, it still puzzles people why so far into her career, Nicki Minaj is losing out to newer artists, despite her innumerable contributions to music and the massive imprint of her career. As we continue, let me know in the comments what are some reasons you think Nicki Minaj doesn't have a Grammy. Do you think she's been done wrong or could she have played into her own troubles? A like and subscription would also be greatly appreciated so you can stay connected to your favorite pop stars. Let's get into it now, here on Pop Dissected. We need to take it back a whole decade to 2012's Grammy ceremony, which arguably is where the history of Nicki Minaj being blackballed originates. Up for four nominations that evening, Nicki was set to deliver one of her first big televised performances at an award show. And this would also be her first performance at the Grammys. Mind you, Nicki had just performed at the Super Bowl with Madonna only a week before this Grammy ceremony. This night was a huge deal for Nicki professionally. She was featured heavily in advertisements. So when Ken Elrich, Ehrlich, Ehrlich, so when Ken, who served as the executive producer for the Grammy ceremony at the time, asked Nikki to cancel her performance, it was a bit confusing. Of course, Nikki refused since she was marketed as one of the biggest performers of the evening. Now, the 2012 ceremony would end up pulling in nearly 40 million viewers, its highest peak since 1984 and its highest peak since. 2012 had a wonderful catalog of performances that led to monumentous viewership. So why was Nikki asked to cancel her performance? Well, Whitney Houston had unexpectedly passed the day before the ceremony. Perhaps Ken used this as a reason to ask Nikki to not go out on stage. Being asked to cancel your performance the night of the show, right as it's happening, may have seemed like a foolproof way to pressure Nikki out of the performance, but of course, she didn't back down and she went on performing the song for her fans and for herself. Though it initially seemed that producers for the Grammy ceremony loved the song Nikki was going to perform, Roman Holiday, and the performance was one of the most talked about moments of the show and even critics seemed to love it, Ken did not feel the same. In 2015, he stated he was disappointed with the performance, had no pride in it, and felt there was too much creative liberty allowed. Now, we could probably sweep this under the rug and treat it as a one and done if other artists hadn't had issues with this particular producer. In discussing Frank Ocean's decision to not submit his album's Blonde and Endless for consideration at the 2017 ceremony, Ken and David Wilde, co-producer and writer for the Grammy ceremony, stated Frank Ocean's 2013 performance was not good TV. The next year, Lore declined to appear in a Tom Petty medley because she wasn't offered to perform her own music, in which Ken stated, we can't deal with everybody. The year after that, are we seeing a trend yet? Ariana Grande backed out of her scheduled performance. According to Ken, it was too late to put a performance together. Ariana retorted, letting fans know Ken was creatively stifling her vision and it was her choice to pull out. This came back around full circle when Nikki eventually commented on this and light was shed on her Roman Holiday performance. So what happened aside from Ken's comments? Well, let's provide a quick synopsis of the number. It begins with Nikki in a confessional opening with Roman's revenge. After finishing this intro with a feisty little growl, a brief film plays that mimics The Exorcist, in which it's revealed Nikki is possessed by her alter ego, Roman. After this, we see Nikki perform with her dancers before being exorcised and lifted into the air. Well, you can imagine the Catholic Church was not happy with this, and they were not. The Catholic League wrote a brief article on it, However, more or less, they seem to take it as a personal attack on Catholicism than anything else. While it's understandable, they wouldn't want their faith to be fictionalized or, as they see, made a mockery of, I think we can understand this was not the intention of their performance. And some people may argue it doesn't matter if it wasn't the intention, it was still offensive to some people, to each their own. 
In rewatching Nikki's number, there are blatant religious references, such as a confessional, the pulpit, and of course, the exorcism. However, the costuming is rather nondescript, no crosses are present, and the stained glass imagery really is an allusion to a church and doesn't reference any specific stained glass works. Again, I get how someone devoted to their faith watching anything they feel twist their religious beliefs would be upset. Let's give a brief benefit of the doubt to Grammy producer Ken and say he didn't want Nikki to perform this particular song because its imagery may be disrespectful compared to the Whitney Houston tribute they did that evening. Okay, perhaps that is understandable. But again, Ken's antagonistic and controlling behavior isn't isolated, and given the fact he resigned in 2019 should be a big telltale sign to all of us that something was going on because following his spat with Nikki and her performance of Roman Holiday, she would never perform at the show again. Of course, we can't know if she was invited and declined or just wasn't invited at all. Nikki seems like the kind who would absolutely share if she declined an invitation. Nikki would still go on to collect Grammy nominations over the next couple years, but would not win. Anything post the pink print would not be considered or perhaps wasn't submitted for consideration. It seems like the Recording Academy only has continued to lose their merit with artists like The Weeknd, Machine Gun Kelly, and Ellie Goulding having all recently called out the association. We have two tweets that may shed more light into this issue surrounding Nicki and even other artists as well. Remember when Nicki called out the Grammys in 2020 for not winning Best New Artist, the award being given to Bonnie Vare who had debuted years prior and was white. And then Tyler the Creator discussed how black artists primarily find themselves in urban or rap categories, even if they experiment with their sound or aren't strictly identifiable as such, which I think in turn this boxes in black artists to only be seen as crafting rap or urban music, and some artists even say they don't even understand what urban technically means. From artists to publications calling out the Grammy for racial bias, this reasoning could absolutely be behind Nicki's lack of wins and hiatus of nominations. In an eight year period from 2012 to 2020, 38% of the artists on the Hot 100 were black, but only 26.7% of those received Grammy nominations. Popular wins and losses have also been questioned, Beyonce losing to Beck, and then Adele, who would go on to say Beyonce deserved Album of the Year, Prince's 1999 and Michael Jackson's Off the Wall didn't secure any nominations, Frank Ocean lost to Mumford and Sons, Kendrick Lamar to Daft Punk, Macklemore, Taylor Swift, and then Bruno Mars. Of course, our example of Adele winning over Beyonce may raise some eyebrows. Some pointed out how part of Beyonce's inspiration for Lemonade was connecting to the culture and history of black individuals in the Deep South, stating often we become inaudible. And it seems the Grammys made sure of that. Beyonce and Chance the Rapper were additionally the only black artist to receive an award that was televised. I'll let everyone draw their own conclusions from this information. But it's clear the issue with the Grammys plaguing Nikki extends beyond the fact she may have been disrespectful towards Catholicism. Which, when you think about it, there was this period from 2010 to about 2014 where we saw a lot of religious imagery, eyes, crosses, triangles. As some fans like to put it, the girls had signed their Illuminati contract. So Nikki wasn't really doing anything too out of the ordinary or too crazy. But I will say, she did push the envelope, but I think the result of her performance is a bit much. The Grammy committee has been subject to controversy since members are allowed to vote in areas or categories outside of their professional knowledge because of the minimum number of votes required to be submitted to remain part of the committee. Thus, you can not only have committee members just casting votes for the sake of it, but using this leverage to manipulate results, whether it be the winner or the losers. There's a lot of issues that haven't been properly resolved within the committee, but a lot of people come back to the idea the committee is made up of older white men who may not be able to dictate more thoughtful responses to their vote, could be out of touch with rising trends and evolution, or have their own agenda and bias of who they want to succeed and fail. Given we don't have much insight into who is on this committee, it's anyone's guess. If there's one thing the Grammy committee loves to do, it is invite artists to their ceremony after giving them a nomination and not having them win. We have seen this time and time again with many artists showing up expecting to win, they bring in the viewership with their performance and their red carpet performance, and they don't win. It's a bit of a game and it's not fair. Through it all, Nikki's lack of Grammy Award win stems from her performance of Roman Holiday at the 2012 Grammy ceremony, 
alongside Blaine exclusion from the Grammy committee. And since Nikki is not the only artist, let alone black artist, to voice her displeasure with the voting process, I think the Grammys are progressively losing their credibility, are unwilling to adapt to thoughtful change, and are not inclusive. It makes the highest honor in music not feel like it anymore. But what are your thoughts? Could Nikki's lack of a Grammy win speak on serious issues within the Grammy organization? Is it the beginning of Nikki's history of being blackballed? Or is there something more personal going on? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe so you can stay connected to your favorite pop stars. Also, be sure to check that description box for videos similar to this one. I'll see y'all next time.